for being here. Um, I know you've got a lot of fantastic ideas for transforming our state tax code, but I, and I'd like Senator McGuire to weigh in on this too. What do you think is the realistic chances of, that once you're governor, I think you will be, <laughs> that we can have a constitutional amendment to our state constitution so that we, as the prerequisite to changing, changing our code, is, is yeah. it really possible to yes. do it given our assembly? Yeah, thank you, Rita. I want to be very clear and very blunt about this. This is not some big jerk politician doing rhetoric that is not going to come true. This is the question before us, right? There are things that I believe in that are a long way from that. But the question about amending the Constitution to get a progressive tax is a question that we have been hovering around between one and seven votes short of in the legislature for years now. You need 36 votes in the Senate, we're there. You need 71 votes in the House, we're not there. The House often lies behind the Senate. But it's not as though we're 20 votes shy, we're five or six. And this has been the case for a while. And Democratic candidates for governor and Democratic governors for a while have said, yeah, yeah, I'm for that, but I'm not going to really put my shoulder into it. Why? Because it's politically hard. Why? Because it upsets the donors. Why? Because, hey, this is Illinois, and I want instant gratification. It takes a little bit of time to change the Constitution. And though it's necessary if we want to be where we have to be 10 years from now, it doesn't help me put out a press release tomorrow about how I've given somebody a pony. And so, in this race, Almost every Democratic candidate for governor is going to say they're for it. Don't be satisfied with that answer. Ask them how they will prioritize it. Here's how I'm going to prioritize it. The day after I'm elected, I'm going to have a meeting with the, a meeting with the four legislative leaders. If that was now, it would be Cullerton and Bill Brady and Madigan and Durkin. Maybe they'll still be the same folks by then, maybe not. I'm going to meet with them and I'm going to say, hey, I just got elected governor. I want to work with you. I want to negotiate. I'm prepared to be flexible. Here's one thing I need, and I need it because the state of Illinois needs it. How can we work together to find those last few votes? And then I'm going to spend, I mean, maybe not Thanksgiving Day itself, <laughs> but I'm going to spend those next few weeks meeting with those legislators, who I already know, by the way, who I already am used to working with, by the way, who I've already built relationships of collaboration with, by the way, and saying, hey, you can count on me to help you with things that are important to you as long as they don't violate my core values. This is the thing that I need. That's what I'm going to do because if we spend the next four years pretending we're for this but not doing it, then 10 years after that, we're going to be back here again. But there's going to be few of us here because fewer people are going to live in Illinois because our tax system and state government will not be a match for the modern economy. And so I think it's doable. I believe it's doable. And the basic evidence is we're not that far away, and we haven't seen a governor do anything like what I'm going to do as governor to make it happen. You were next. I had the same question, but now um, I guess my follow-up question is, so what's the holdup? You have five or six people you need to convince. Why are they so? Well, if you want to go way into the weeds on this with me right now. Right now, you've got 67 Democrats in the House, and you need 71 votes. So you would need at least four Republicans. With Bruce Rauner as governor, I don't think that's going to happen. Bruce Rauner has essentially bought the Republican legislature. It is very hard for them to stand up to him. About 10 or 15 of them did on the budget, and they're to be commended for that. Joliet Junior College is in much better condition because of that courage. But that's a really rare and difficult thing. And so I'm not optimistic that it's going to happen with Rauner as governor. But I think with Browner off the field, there's Republicans who know this is the right thing to do. There's Republicans who understand that Wisconsin is not some kind of left-wing paradise, and yet they have a progressive income tax. Iowa is not some kind of left-wing paradise, and yet they have a progressive income tax. There are Republicans who would notice that on the federal level, the top tax bracket is 39.6% and the bottom is 10%. And not only that, but when Marco Rubio ran for president, his platform had multiple tax brackets. And when Jeb Bush ran for president, poor guy, his tax bracket had multiple, <laughs> tax plan had multiple brackets. When Donald Trump ran for president, not that he knew it was in his tax plan, I can tell him that it had multiple tax brackets. <laughs> Paul Ryan is supposed to be the great guru of right-wing budgeting. His tax plan has multiple tax brackets. A lot of these Republicans understand, if you talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, this is probably the right thing to do. 
we're way out on an island by ourselves and we'll tech crews and nobody else. That's not a place we want to be. But right now, with Browner exerting the kind of influence he's been exerting, it's hard for him to step out. Starting in November 2018, that changes. 